Dear students, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about a chapter from science that is metals and non-metals. This is the part 2 video. In the part 1 video, we have already discussed about the general properties of the metals and the non-metals. So in this video, that is in part 2 video, we are exactly discussing about some important chemical properties of the metals. It means how do the metals react with the air, water and acids. This is very important teaching point because in examination there may be chances of asking the more questions from this concept. Dear students, now let's discuss about the chemical properties of the metals. Especially how do the metals react with air? It means oxygen. Generally, when metals are burnt with air, they produce the respective metal oxides. Example, when magnesium, when the magnesium ribbon is heated in the presence of oxygen, they produce the magnesium oxide. In the same way, copper, on when burnt with, with oxygen, it produces the copper oxide, a black layer of powder. At the same time, the aluminum reacts with oxygen to produce the aluminum oxide. Generally, this magnesium oxide, copper oxide, aluminum oxide. So generally, these metal oxides are basic in nature. That means whenever these metal oxides, when dissolved in the water, they become the basis. That means which can turn the red litmus into the blue litmus. So one important thing is when we are going to heat the magnesium ribbon, it is better to rub the magnesium ribbon with the sandpaper because to remove the uh, oxide layer which can prevent the further oxidation of the metal so it is better to remove the metal oxide so that it can easily catch the fire dear students here is an important question that is what are amphoteric oxides the answer is the metal oxides which react with both acids and bases to produce the respective salt and water. Such oxides are called as amphoteric oxides. The best example for amphoteric oxides are one is aluminum oxide and second one is the zinc oxide. Dear students, these oxides show the property of both acidic and basic. Here we can notice some important chemical reactions. Here the aluminum oxide is reacting with both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide producing the respective salt and water. In the first reaction, you can notice aluminum chloride is formed, that is AlCl3. In the second reaction, sodium aluminate, that is NaAlO2 are formed. Dear students, there is another important word that is called alkalis. So what are alkalis? The simple answer is the water soluble bases are called alkalis. Usually, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, they completely dissolve in water. That's why the potassium hydroxide and the sodium hydroxide, these are called as the alkalis. The next chemical property of metals, it is the, how do the metals react with water? So, some metals readily react with the cold water. And some metals react with only with hot uh, react with the hot water, and some metals react only with the steam. Let's discuss which metals react with the cold water. The metals like sodium, potassium. So these two metals react very vigorously with the cold water to produce the respective hydroxides and liberating the hydrogen gas and the heat energy. Let's take an example. When sodium reacts with water, it readily gives the sodium hydroxide a base, hydrogen gas, and heat. At the same time, so this heat energy uh, catches the fire with the hydrogen. This is a, a very vigorous reaction. This should be conducted in the guidance of the teacher only. The second example is calcium. When calcium reacts with water, this is not a such a vigorous reaction. This is a slow reaction. Again, here also we are getting the calcium hydroxide, a base, liberating the hydrogen gas and heat energy. 
but here there is no catching of fire because here the amount of heat liberated is less. The next chemical property is how do the metals react with the uh, hot water and with the steam. See, magnesium it is a, 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 a metal which doesn't react with the cold water. This magnesium is chemically less reactive. It reacts with the hot water only. So when magnesium reacts with the hot water, again, we're getting the respective hydroxide like, like magnesium hydroxide and liberating the hydrogen gas. You can find the chemical equation here. Please go through this chemical reaction. At the same time, some metals like aluminum, zinc, and iron. So these three metals do not react with either cold water or the hot water. So these metals are chemically very less reactive. So these metals react only with the steam. When these metals react with the steam, they produce the respective oxides. Remember, not hydroxides, respective oxides liberating the hydrogen gas. The next property of the acids, it is the, how do the acids, sorry, how do the metals react with the acids? We know that generally metals react with the dilute acids to produce the respective metallic salt and liberating the hydrogen gas. When hydrochloric acid reacts with the zinc, it produces a salt, it is called as the zinc chloride and liberating the hydrogen gas. In the same way, the sulfuric acid reacts with the magnesium to produce the respective salt like magnesium sulfate and the hydrogen gas. One important chemical equation is the nitric acid reacts with manganese or magnesium to produce the respective salt and the hydrogen gas. Remember, this nitric acid do not produce hydrogen with all the metals. Only with the magnesium and manganese, nitric acid produces the respective salt and the hydrogen gas. Apart from the magnesium and manganese, the nitric acid reacts with other metals also to produce the different salts. Very important, here we are getting the water molecule. Why? The reason is here the nitric acid, it is a strong oxidizing agent. So this nitric acid oxidizes the hydrogen to form the water molecule. So here the nitric acid, it is acting as a, a strong oxidizing agent. So dear students, these are all some important chemical equations you have to suppose to practice. So this is very important chemical equation for the point view of the examination. I wish all the success for you. In the next videos, we are going to discuss more information about the, the same chapter that is metals and the non-metals. Thank you for watching this video.